many of you have tried rereading your favorite book or rewatching your favorite movie at different stages of your life? Madam Toastmaster of the day and my fellow Toastmasters. Just as I mentioned, if you have tried rereading your favorite book or let's say rewatching your favorite movie at different points of your life, I'm sure you would have realized that the plot never changes, but your perception about that movie would change from time to time. Now, let me get this very clear. Up until this last end semester vacation, even I myself had not tried that out. So on the 15th of December, after completing my end semester examinations, I decided to go home after a lapse of eight long months. So after eight long months, I step out of what I would like to call a concrete jungle in the western coast of Sri Lanka. So I slowly climb the mountains and reach my hometown, a place that I've held so close to my heart. And unfortunately, or fortunately, after I reach home, I decide to do the things that I've been doing since my childhood. And one of the very important or the most significant things that I've always done during the evening sessions, at my times, let's say the leisure time or after schools, is to have a stroll down the road and to end up at the stream that flows just beyond the shop that I used to go shopping at. So on a fine Tuesday evening, when I was taking that usual stroll, I end up seeing a very unfamiliar sight. The usual golden side of the grain field paddy fields was replaced with a much darker sight of nothing but ashes of all the paddy fields being burnt. So fellow Toastmasters, all of us know the situation in the country right now with lack of compost and lack of fertilizer to go ahead with plantations and cultivation. But my focus today is not that. I would like to mention it is that sight that gave me the trigger to go back home and reread one of my favorite books. And that brings back to the title of this topic, the title of Cake in Peace, then Cakes and Air in Fear. The story of the country mouse and the town mouse was one of the very first stories that I was able to read by myself and eventually grasp something out of. I was only six years old by then. I'm sure each one of you would have read that story for sure. At that time, when I was just six years old, when my mom explained the story to me, I was able to understand that rather than being tormented by the worries of wealth, it's much better to live in a self sufficient poverty. Now, the traumatizing side. I thought to myself, I would re read that book once again. And when I did so, I realized the conclusion of that story leads to a more broader dimensions of the modern life. We need to understand that the development of one proportion of the community is dependent on the expropriation and labor of another more marginalized class. And with the image of pristine cosmopolitan worlds abound in what I earlier called in this western coast of the country, it becomes very easy for us to forget how we are indebted to life beyond these edges of these cosmopolitan or so-called developed cities. This very mechanism, I feel, is idolized in a Sri Lankan context when we closely look at the tea estate laborers, and especially right now, the paddy cultivators. Ladies and gentlemen, we as Sri Lankans depend largely on tea estate planters and the cultivators. But what is the benefit? Not just their cultivation, but the development of this 
entire country? That is the bigger question. Ladies and gentlemen, as I reread that book, it immediately struck me that whilst we are moving forward in the direction of technological advancement, we tend to forget and therefore erase and completely ignore our role or our role to give back to the people who actually do a lot for us. I'm not criticizing any high authorities. I'm not criticizing any personnel who are in responsibility. I'm just saying as ordinary human beings, as ordinary citizens of a country like Sri Lanka, we should be in our mind that it's much more important for us to be uh, to life beyond the edge of the city. And my fellow Toastmasters, if we remind ourselves about that very duty, I'm sure maybe we'd be a country mouse or a town mouse. We would make sure that the bacon and even peas are in Toastmasters of the day. Uh, dear Toastmasters and fellow guests, I think the topic I just got is something which is meant for me. Uh, so, um, walking into 2022, being single. So, uh, shout out to all the singles. Uh, I hope you all have been happy all your life and don't worry about yourselves and don't think about the couples and be like, I wish I had a boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, being all sad and um, crying alone in the corner. No, we are more privileged than them. Just have a positive mind stepping into the new year. This is about you. You should make yourself better and a wonderful person. Why? So um, also... Um, I don't have any new year resolutions on not being single or anything, but I just want to keep the streak going. So I hope you guys also want to do the same for the singles. So, uh, yes, and uh, wish you all the best and let's stay safe. Thank you. Like to start off with, um, let me just let you all know that Toastmaster Amna Ahmed's speech was almost a hike. I believe that she took us on a hike where she helped us explore a lot of new things. So to start off with, why I say this was a hike is that she started off with suspense. She started off worry, but never told who actually was part of that story. And I really like how you related back to that suspense and broke it all at once and told us that it was you who was part of that story. And I really like how you incorporated your personal struggle into your speech because nothing will ever help you convey the message as strongly as a personal story could ever put. So having that said, I would also like to point out the stage usage. It's understandable that in virtual platform, the usage of stage could be a bit tough or difficult. But within the limited resources that you had and the limited space that you had, I am pretty convinced that you used it very wisely, especially in terms of stage segmentation, how you moved from one point to another, from one point of the stage to another point of the stage. That was very impressive. And also the usage of props. The cover page of the book that you referred to in your story was so impressive because we were able to understand what that story was all about and what that book actually had to provide us. But let me also point out this. So I told this was a hike. So climbing a mountain and climbing down. Let me now point out how the climb could have been made, could have been made. But if the teachings of the storybook that you narrated could be backed up with your personal experiences rather than a mere narration of the book itself that could have elevated the content of your speech on a much more higher note. And I would also like to point out a, a smooth conclusion, as I told earlier. You start off, you release the climax, and you climb down slowly. Rather than rushing it through at the very latter end of your speech, if the conclusion could have been slightly smoother, it could have been much appropriate, 
to elevate the standards of your speech. Last but never the least, I would like to mention if you had used a little bit more emotions in your speech in terms of expressions facially and also in terms of uh, body language that could have also helped you elevate the speech. Last but never the least, to Master Amna Ahmed, I would like to congratulate you for completing your level one, uh, level two project one. Uh, in such style and with such distinction. And I hope uh, the tips help you elevate the standards of your speech in the coming years. Thank you, Toastmaster Shikhan.